Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today we're gonna make a beehive. This video is sponsored by Google Images. Today we're in my backyard, specifically my back porch, where a couple of months ago we found that some honeybees had moved in and created a hive inside the wall. Rather than killing off these bees, I wanted to try to relocate them, so I called a local beekeeper and asked him how we should move them. In the conversation, I got really fascinated with beekeeping and decided to make some hives. So first, let's go make the hives, and then we'll move these guys. I did a bunch of research on different types of beehives, and it turns out there's a whole bunch of different types. But one of the most common ones is the Langstroth hive, so that's what I decided to go with. I looked online and found some really simple plans. These are a standard plan, and there's a bunch of different versions of them out there that are all basically the same. But the cool thing about the Langstroth hive is that you make individual boxes that you can stack on top of each other, and if you want to expand your hive over time, you can just make more boxes and put them on. The reason I went with the Langstroth hive is because it was designed around how bees actually work and live. It's got some taller boxes at the bottom where they're bred, and then the more medium-sized boxes in the middle are where all the honey is produced. So we're basically gonna be making several boxes that stack on top of each other and then frames to go down inside them. That's what we're gonna do for the construction. I'll link these down below if you wanna check them out. But also you can make the outside of the hive look however you want. And for that, we're going to our sponsor, Google Images. Google Images is an awesome way to get inspiration for your DIY projects. It's super easy. You just go in a browser to Google, type in whatever you want, and then hit the images button. You're gonna get a bunch of image results and you can narrow that down even further by using the categories across the top. And then when you find an image that you like, click the visit button on it to go straight through to the main content. I was looking for how to make this look better than just painting it white. And I found a really cool image that's not the right style, but I really like the fact that you could see the wood grain. So I decided to use that with some rot resistant wood. I think in that image, they were actually using poplar for the beehives. A lot of people use pine, but they usually paint it. Some people use cedar, and that's what I'm gonna use. It's gonna look really nice whether you have finish on it or not, and it's rot resistant and should be fine for the bees. These are basically finger jointed boxes. Let me cut these down to length, and then we'll do the finger joints. I made a whole bunch of these finger joints or box joints and I did this with a dado stack and a jig, but you don't need those to do this. In fact, there's a bunch of different ways. You can use a regular saw blade, you can use a router. My buddy David Picciuto just did a whole video about how to do finger joints with just a router. But I've got these pieces done, now they're ready to put together into a box. So I'm just gonna get some wood glue and square these up. We've got these medium boxes all glued up, so we're gonna wait for those to dry and work on the deep boxes. Now I couldn't find a cedar one by 12, so we've got a one by eight and a one by four. We're gonna join those together with a biscuit joiner. And the way that works is this tool cuts a small slot in each one of the pieces, and then you slide in this piece, which is called a biscuit, and then glue it all together, clamp it up, and it makes it into a single board. You wanna cut mating slots in both of these pieces, so if you line them up and then draw a line across, you can use that point as the center of your biscuit.
While I was waiting on the medium boxes to dry, I cut down the pieces for the deep boxes and added the fingers. These are quite a bit deeper, but one thing I forgot on these was to add a rabbit along two edges so we can hang some frames on the inside. We'll get to why that's important later on, but I'm gonna go ahead and add that rabbit to these pieces before I assemble the boxes. And on these, I'll just have to go back with a router and add it. Making those rabbits was a huge mess, but they're done. So all the boxes have the rabbit on each side. Now the thing that goes in that rabbit is a frame, and the frame is where the bees build their comb. The frame is gonna be made out of a piece of cedar with a little notch on each end, and it's gonna drop down and sit in those rabbits. And to make the sides of the frame, we've actually got some laser cut pieces that are gonna fit right here. We'll have one on each end, and then a piece that goes across the bottom to connect them. And we have to make eight of these frames for every box. So we have a lot to do. Now we've got all our pieces cut for the frames. We've got 32 of these, we've got 32 of these, and we have a lot more of these. Each one of these brackets that we laser cut is actually two sandwiched together, and then we have to have two of those for each one of the frames. Josh made up this simple little jig so we can lay these out and glue them together. And then we're gonna drive in a couple brad nails just to hold them in place while the glue dries. Here's one of the finished frames. Now we just have to do a whole lot more. It's the next day, all of our frames are glued up. They're in good shape. And I wanted to show you how they go into these boxes. You just drop them in and they land on that little rabbit that we cut and then you can stack them up. These little pieces that come up on the sides are what act as spacers to make sure that they don't get too close because any gap that's less than about three eighths of an inch, the bees will fill up with a wax-like material. So we wanna make sure to keep these apart so that you can easily take them in and out. Now this is supposed to hold 10. We miscalculated a little bit, so we can really only fit nine, but I think that'll actually be okay. It'll give them a little bit more space in between them. We've got all the boxes done down here, so it's time to move to the covers. There's an inner cover and an outer cover. This one has a hole in the middle of it to allow the bees to come in and out. And then this top cover will be what protects the entire hive from rain and weather. And these are basically just frames with panels on the inside of them. For the inner cover, we're gonna use this thin plywood. And I've already got the frame pieces cut up for the outer frame, so we're just gonna cut a dado in these with a regular saw blade. And then we can fit this piece right inside there. I started making that cut and actually realized that the riving knife was higher than the blade and was stopping the wood from going through. Now this is here to protect you and you definitely want to use it if you have one, but unfortunately I'm going to have to take it off to make these dado cuts and then I'll put it back on.
The inner cover is done, so now we're gonna make the outer cover, and this is really just a box with a flat top that goes over the top of the entire hive. Then we're gonna wrap this with some aluminum flashing to make sure that no water or other stuff gets down on the inside of the hive. Since rainwater will collect on the top of this, that flashing will help stop any wood rot. I suppose you could make any kind of roof you wanted to. You could make a slanted roof, you could add shingles, but I really like the flashing and the wood grain that I saw in that photo on Google Images. If you remember a while back, we made a tree house, and on that tree house, there's a slide. To make that slide, we rolled out a long piece of aluminum flashing, and it had to be really wide. Luckily, that same flashing will work to cover the top of this. There's nothing special about it, except for the fact that it's wider than what you would typically find. We finished both of the tops, and the last thing to make is the bottom. Now on these plans, it's got basically just a piece of plywood with a three-sided frame, and that fourth side is open so the bees can come in and out. But I saw some other examples of ways to do it that I like a little bit better. One of them is a frame with a mesh on top of it, and then a solid piece of plastic underneath that that's removable. This lets all of the nasty stuff in the hive drain through that mesh down onto the plastic, then you can pull the plastic out and clean it off if you need to. So that's what we're gonna do. Here's what I've got so far for the base. This is the landing area where the bees will land here to go into the hive. And then this surface around here is where we're gonna put that mesh I mentioned earlier. We're gonna slide in the white piece of plastic through this slot in the back and it's gonna follow this dado down here. And then to cover up the top of that mesh, I've got some 3 8 of an inch strips that are gonna go right here. That's gonna create a 3 8 of an inch opening on the front for the bees to come in and out of. This is just aluminum screen that you would maybe use on a screen door or a window screen. It has one edge that's folded and not rough. I'm gonna use that on the front. Then just put this down with a staple gun and trim off the outside. We've got the bee boxes built, and so now it's time to move the bees. This wall right down here is what we're gonna have to remove to get the bees out. And I can actually smell the honey from here, which is kind of crazy. The beekeeper that I talked about earlier is coming this afternoon. We're gonna take this panel off and move them. Now this video is not about beekeeping, it's about building the hive. So unfortunately, I'm not gonna give you a whole lot of information about moving them, I just wanted to show you the process. Huge thanks to Google Images for sponsoring this video. Be sure to go check them out to get some ideas for your next DIY project. I'm super happy that I chose to go with the cedar on these boxes. I think they look great. This has been a really fascinating project for me. I've learned a ton about bees, a ton about beehives, and I've still got a whole bunch to learn about actually keeping the bees. 
If you're interested in beekeeping, one of the best things you can do is find a local beekeeper near you and get to know them. A lot of the specifics of beekeeping are actually about your local area. So if you find a local beekeeper, you'll have all the information you need. Huge thanks to our local beekeeper, Richie, for helping us move this hive. Hopefully we'll have some more content around this in the future. We'll see. We've got tons of other types of projects that you may want to check out. So be sure to subscribe if you're not already. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Yeah. And they go boing. Today we're going to make a beehive. Oops, I zoomed the wrong way. Because <laughs> if I don't, Forby's going to like just throw a bee on screen or something anyway. Forby.